Hello everybody, my name is Ampere Beep, and welcome back. Today, we'll be focusing on how the stations and their surroundings will be once Merced to Bakersfield is open. This video will be a bit shorter than usual, since a lot of what we'll be talking about today is still being designed. Thank you everybody for all of your support on the last video. We are nearly at a thousand subscribers, which is so much more than I ever thought I would get. So I'd like to thank each and every one of you for stopping by. I would also like to thank everyone for joining our Discord server. We've had a lot of cool discussions in addition to talking about some pretty interesting topics, so feel free to drop by if that interests you. The link is down in the description below. Now with that out of the way, let's jump into the latest Sentinel-2 imagery. Let's get started with McCombs Road. Here, on the south side, you can see that some sub-road bed has been laid. And here, at Pond and Magnolia Avenues, you can see that the embankment has been worked on significantly. This means that all utility relocations should be complete here. Moving further north, here at the north-south canal relocation, you can see that the basin on the south side has been drained, which means that they can work full-time on this canal relocation. This is great news, as it means that progress should rapidly speed up here. Here at Avenue 24, you can see that the embankment has been worked on on the north side. Avenue 24 itself is an agricultural road, and it's going through a box culvert here underneath the right-of-way. Moving further north, at Avenue 56, the right-of-way has been cleared once again through the basin, and they can finally start working on the embankment going through it. Additionally, the Avenue 56 embankment itself has been worked on, which is great news. Some more right-of-way work has been done at this feedlot, south of the Thule River, in addition to more girders being installed at the Thule River Viaduct. They are about halfway done installing girders now, which is great news, making great progress so far. Here at Whitley Avenue, some more work is being done, but it's very hard to tell what's going on. Moving further north to Wakenna and Orange Avenues, you can see that more land is being cleared on the west side of the canal. Here on the south side of the south State Route 43 overcrossing, you can see that some land is being cleared. This is good news as this area flooded during the rains last winter, and working on this means that they won't have to redo it again. Here at the north State Route 43 overcrossing, you can see that land is being cleared on the west side of the embankment, and some land on the south side of Jersey Avenue is being cleared. And at Hanford Armona Road, you can see that the west embankment's land is almost fully cleared now. They still need some more work on the eastern embankment, but we should be seeing work on this start soon. Moving further north to the Hanford Viaduct, not nearly as much progress has been made this time, but some other things have been done. Notably, some land has been cleared, and the south embankment might potentially be being built up at the moment. This is great news as it means that access to this part of the viaduct should be significantly better than on the north side, as Grangeville Boulevard needs its own grade separation. At Nebraska Avenue, you can see that right-of-way is being cleared for the BNSF realignment. This is great news as it means that work is starting on Nebraska Avenue once again. And a little bit further north at Manning Avenue, we can see that the embankment area is being prepared. We might be seeing the grade separation start construction soon. Additionally, on the north side and the south side of Manning Avenue, you can see that the right-of-way for the future high-speed rail alignment has been cleared. This gray area on the east side is where BNSF track will be realigned, and on the west side of that is where the high-speed rail alignment will be. Moving even further north, we can see at Central Avenue, some land has been cleared on the north side in preparation for the grade separation. Finally, we move to Veterans Boulevard slash Golden State Boulevard realignment north. We can see that at Barstow Avenue here, they've connected it to the future alignment and across this industrial lot, they've paved the roadway. According to online sources, this grade separation slash interchange should be opened in the middle of November. That finishes up the latest Sentinel-2 updates. Let's move on to the first subject of today's video. Recent updates. So now let's get on to the first topic of today's video. This is the new procurement strategy for the track and systems contracts, and you can see what the timing will be for each of these packages. So first we have package 1A, which is designed for track and systems. This will be let out in Q4, so the December board meeting. And then package 1B, which is the CMGC contract, which is a new way of contracting out certain portions of the project. Previously, the High Speed Rail Authority has done exclusively design build for Merced de Madera and Shafter to Bakersfield. They have chosen design bid build, where designing and building are not done by the same contractor, which should remove some of the issues that were caused previously by the contractor having full control. And here is construction manager general contractor. This is an entirely different construction process. 
which I'm not super familiar with, but I will get into this at some future time. And this contract will be let out in Q1 2024, so likely the January, February, or March board meetings. We aren't quite sure which one this will be yet. I'm going to say it's probably more likely the February or March board meetings, but we'll have to see on that one. The next one is the systems contract. So this is signaling train control, communications, and traction power. So power delivery to the overhead catenary. This one is going to be another different build contract form, which is progressive design build. So this is an alternative to the regular design build where the process is sped up by combining certain phases. And what the authority is trying to do here is they're trying to figure out what contract system works the best rather than just going design build and not thinking about it. This contract will be let out also in Q1, so probably February or March. And then next we have the train sets contract. Supply maintain, this is just for the format of this. Since this is not a construction contract, they need to maintain the train sets after. And the request for qualifications was supposed to be done in Q3, but it's highly unlikely that we get all of the information for this until December. But the timeline does say Q3 2023, so it might be happening in this board meeting. And then the request for proposals will happen Q1. So the same time frame as I discussed before. The next one is depots and facilities, and the packaging is up for debate still within the authority, but this should happen in Q2 2024 for the design, and then in 2026 construction should start on this. Now this includes the maintenance of way sightings, which should show up in several different places along the 171 miles from Merced to Bakersfield, and the heavy maintenance facility, which will be between American Avenue and Lincoln Avenue in CP23. Next is the integration support independent safety assessor, independent cost estimator, and construction manager. And those are all going to be in 2024 Q1 with the exception of independent safety assessor and construction manager. And this is just helping the authority keep things on schedule. And finally, let's move on to the construction progress for each construction package. Now here's CP1. You can see actual structures for right now are 11 are under construction, 17 are complete, and everything except for the utility design is finished. This is exactly what was shown for forecast, which means we are on target right now, as well as the guideway, which is exactly the same. 18 miles of guideway are under construction, two are already complete. We can see here the construction progress for CP23. We have 15 structures complete and 21 structures under construction right now. And the forecast matches the actual structures and the guideway. 16 miles of guideway are under construction and 33 are complete. And finally on CP4, we can see that as before, actual structures and forecasted structures, all of them are complete, but the guideway is incomplete as a result of the few utility relocations that are still underway, specifically the canal relocations. And now let's move on to the topic of today's video. What will these stations look like? What will the areas around them look like? So here is the site plan for the Bakersfield station. You can see as it shows, the HSR viaduct is 60 feet above ground. You have 600 feet of platform refuge and the normal platforms are 800 feet long. You can see that the viaduct will be built all the way out to about here. And then there will be a concrete end piece without having any changes made east of Chester Avenue. It's hard to tell what's going on here, but you can see there are some driveways here and what I would assume to be parking lots. There are some drop-off points here as well as some busways here. And here's the main entrance off of F Street. There will be a bridge over the UP railroad tracks right here and it will connect to 34th Street as well as some tail tracks on the west side. Now we are moving on to the render. You can see that there's a lot of parking here. Here are the bus bays as well as some more parking on the north side and the bridge across the UP railroad tracks that leads almost to 34th Street. What's also going to happen is that a new interchange is going to be built at F Street that keeps cars underneath the highway. And moving forward to the plan that the city of Bakersfield has put out. Now, the area in the striped pink slash purple near downtown Bakersfield is planned to be mixed use infill. And you can see that all of this green area up here is planned to be open space. This plan is for the first 10 years of high speed rail being in place. And now we can move on to the next 10 years after that. So here we can see the mixed use infill continues north and now reaches all the way to State Route 204, as well as some more mixed use office over here in the blue solid area and mixed use retail in the purple solid area. Southeast of here, you can see this green area, which will become open space. Eventually this will go underneath the future high-speed rail viaduct. Currently, this is a warehouse park. There will also be residential infill in this light yellow area. And in this dark blue area, there's going to be mixed use hotel space. And here for 20 to 30 years after it opens, you can see that this is going to be an HSR development zone where the station is. There'll be more mixed use infill off of Bernard Street. 
and some of the green space will be taken up with new developments. Additionally, there will be more retail mixed use south of where the current Amtrak station is. This is a very good plan and I'm glad that the city of Bakersfield is considering it because they did a lot better than a lot of the other cities along the alignment, which we'll get to in a moment. Now we can move on to the Kings Tulare Station. This is the site plan for the Kings Tulare Station. So you can see the Hanford Viaduct here. There is a tail track on the west side of the viaduct. And you can see the platforms will mainly be on the south side of the San Joaquin Valley Railroad. You can see here, this is labeled the Cross Valley Corridor, which I will show you in a moment, as well as the vertical circulation areas. So this is where the escalators and stairs will be. And the main station building will be on the west side of the station. The areas of refuge, which will eventually become more passenger space, are up here. And you can see this big dashed box is the station area. I would assume that eventually this area will all be developed with new buildings, but that is entirely dependent on Kings County and the city of Hanford. And here we are with the render. You can see right here, the east side of the station will have a large parking lot, and the west side will have large roads with orchards between them, at least until development happens. And here you can see the Cross Valley Corridor commuter rail with their platform. Unfortunately, Kings County has not made any plans for development in this area, but hopefully they come around doing it later. Moving on to Fresno Station, we can see the site plan for the Fresno Station. There will be tail tracks on both sides of the station for both directions, which will be mainly used for storage. And you can see the historic depot is right here. They will be removing these ramps here off of Fresno Street and making Fresno and H Street an at-grade intersection once again. G Street will be put on a bridge over Fresno Street, and you can see the Tulare Street undercrossing right here. This green area is the pedestrian bridge for access to the station, as well as the dark blue being the main platforms and the light blue areas being passenger refuge areas. Eventually, these areas, of course, will become more platform space. Here we are with a rendering of the station area. This is the west side of the station here, with G Street being the main road right in front of this. I'm not super satisfied with this station design, as Fresno gets extremely hot in the summers, and I can't imagine how hot this area would be. It does seem like there is a glass interior area above the tracks, so there should be an air-conditioned space. Starting off, we have what the area will look like around the station on opening day. This appears to be a three block radius of the main station location, which is also a quarter mile, a five minute walk. You can see Chukchansi Stadium right here and lots of parking space. This says opening day 2027, but this document is from 2018. So change this to 2030. You can see that there are very few new buildings planned for this area. All new buildings will be marked as a white square with a black outline. You can see on the corner of Van Ness and Tuolumne, there's a small white building here. So this is a brand new building, but elsewhere there is nothing. There will be new open space off of Mariposa Street. But other than that, no changes. Further on, we can see some small changes are made. Large parking garages are going to be built immediately adjacent to the train station, which is unfortunate, but I will get onto that later. And then finally, the full build out. Once high speed rail is fully completed, for phase one at least. The station area will look like this. This entire area will be filled out with mixed use development, hopefully taller than their planned four or five stories, but we'll have to see for that. There's a small open space between these buildings over here, but other than that, not many changes. And here we are with the station district. These are the planned names of the areas in the surroundings of the station. So you can see the Fulton District East Arrival. Keep in mind, this is rotated roughly 45 to 70 degrees. The left side of the image is somewhat north. You can see Chinatown West Arrival with Mariposa Street and the green space. Historic Chinatown to the southeast or the southwest. And then we have the North and South Fulton Gateways as well as Chinatown West. This area right here within the one block radius of the station area will be the sub area of the station and will be a focus of high intensity development. Here we go for the intermodal section of the project. They're going to be building vehicle loading areas for cars, taxis, shuttles, and tour buses on the southwest side of the station. And on the northwest side of the station will be loading zones for bus like Fresno Area Express, Greyhound, more shuttles and tour buses, and then more pedestrian areas further north. And here, unfortunately, is where we come to my least favorite part of this plan. They want to build 10,861 parking spaces within a quarter mile of the station. Unfortunately, this conflicts with their plan of having a 24-7 station area with constant activity, as many of these are parking garages. I don't know about you, but spending time around a parking garage is not very pleasant. All of the stuff in red will be future parking garages or parking lots. 
everything in blue, with the exception of the striped blue, are existing parking garages. This is a huge problem as it continues to discourage Fresno residents from taking transit to their high-speed rail station, which continues the city's dependence on cars. As Fresno grows dramatically as a result of this, you will see traffic become a nightmare, as 10,000 people potentially might be driving into this small area of downtown to go park for their trains. This is very unfortunate. And now, moving on to Madera, we have very little information on this station. The preliminary design for the Madera station is a small parking lot with a small road connecting it to the Avenue 12 grade separation. And the full build out will be a direct connection from this intersection at Avenue 12 all the way to the new larger parking lot and high speed rail platform. I very much hope that this is never constructed as Amtrak is planning on cutting Amtrak service south of Merced once high speed rail opens, which will make this project fairly useless with the exception of bus connectivity. And finally, the Merced station. Merced is also an unfortunate station as the city has not put out an official plan yet for what they want to do with the station area once high-speed rail arrives. So far, they have the future Amtrak structure that gets them from the BNSF corridor to the UP corridor, as well as ACE in purple. You can see here, each side will have a 265-foot platform refuge area, as well as the usual 800-foot platform. This platform will be between R and O Street, and as you will be able to see in the render, it's going to be above ground about three levels, which will give you two levels of parking. I would rather this space be used for shopping or some kind of land use that could be filled with places that people would want to go, but we can't hope for everything. Now with that out of the way, thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. Feel free to join the Discord server. Link is down below. And I will be coming back with another video two weeks from now. See ya.